Hello everyone, this is Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist and welcome back to our video series Scrivener for the Family History Writer. This is our third video in the series. Our first video we had an overall look at Scrivener. In our second uh, video we took a look at the cork board and this is where you plan and outline your family history projects. Today we're going to take a look at the editor. This is where you're going to spend most of your time writing those stories. Um, the editor is extremely flexible and when we talk about the editor we're talking about this middle part of the interface here where you're going to write your stories. One of the things that I want to bring your attention to is that we tend to make our environment fit how we want our project to look but in Scrivener it's, it's actually the opposite. We create a writing environment, what is going to be most flexible and most creative for us to write. When it comes to dealing with how we want our final project to look, Scrivener deals with that in the compile stage. So when we want to get to the right, the right font, font sizes, spacing, um, based on what your editor or agent wants or for self-publishing um, from a self-publishing perspective, then we will look at that at compile. We're not going to deal with that now in the editor. The editor is just about making that perfect writing environment for you. So let's move on and let's take a look at some of the different elements in the editor that make this um, program so flexible. So first thing we're going to look at is the format bar. The format bar is pretty basic like any other word processing. It has your fonts and your font sizes, your spacing, um, your bold, your italic, underline, your, your font colors, your highlighters, um, your, your bullet points, all, all very basic stuff. You can also though insert a table and I want to draw your attention to this because I do believe someone asked me a question about dealing with a table in Scrivener. Now, by all means, if you have a table created in Scrivener uh, or in Excel and you want to import it into Scrivener, you could certainly do that. But once you copy it and paste it into here, it's going to deal with it as an image, which means you can't change the data. If you want to have a table where you can change the data, then you're going to do it from this perspective. So quite simply click on that bottom, it it's gets a table started for you and then you can start adding columns and rows um, based on um, whatever is you're trying to create. And then quite simply you can see it, you can add your data and adjust your data accordingly. So um, again, flexible based depending on, on what it is exactly that you, you want to be creating here. And quite simply, we can delete that table and get rid of it just as simple as we put it in. Um, the other part of our, our format bar, we have a ruler down here, again, for setting up your tabs and indenting. And for me, um, once you have that stuff set up, I, I like to get rid of it, clean it up. So you can come up here to format and you can unclick show the ruler and you can hide that very, very simply like that. And we can do the same with that format bar. Once you have everything set up to how you want the, this manuscript to look, you can quite simply hide that former back format bar and we can start to have a little bit cleaned up version of the interface. So before we, we're going to take a look at the header view up here, but before we do that, I want to show you how else we can, we can start to strip down this interface. Um, we can uh, get rid of our binder and we can also get rid of our inspector. So now it's really starting to have a lot less distractions going on. And we have across here what we refer to as the header bar. And it has a few tools on it that will help us um, to navigate this particular screen. First of all, we have a little tool here. And this basically will bring you back and forth between two different uh, chapters within your, within your story. And it doesn't deal with... Um, what chapters before or after it deals with the last one that you were at. So if I forward it goes back here. If I keep going this way I go back to this one. So again if you have two chapters you want to go back and forth between but they're not necessarily um, right next to each other in the story you could easily toggle back and forth between them. Over here if you just want to go up and down within your manuscript then you can quite easily do that by just toggling up and down. That simple. 
we have a little icon here and this is basically a little little shortcut so we can go to the go to and I can click over and go to any other file within my manuscript just by simply doing that um, there's a little lock in place here and we will get back to that in just one minute but first I want to jump over here to our split screen view so let's just click on our split screen view here and uh, take a look at how that can can help us in the split screen we want to uh, we can use this for a couple of different reasons um, one for us being family historians is to be able to ha have our writing in one screen and have our research in another screen so very simply just like that that that's a big help but you can also use it so perhaps you want to um, are writing one scene um, and you want to have your uh, another scene pulled up because you want to refer back and forth between two different scenes or two different chapters or perhaps you're you finish this scene and you're starting the new one so you want to have that finished scene in front of you so you're consistent moving forward with your next scene you can also pull up down here your cork board so you can just have um, your overall all view of the uh, let me just go to draft and that'll bring up our cork board you can also put in your outline so we haven't talked about outliner yet and this is basically it takes your cork board and puts it into an outline um, format as opposed to on the cue cards um, I'm going to do a separate video where we will actually discuss um, how we can manipulate that outliner to what you want it to look like but you can also have your outline going on while you have your writing in this split screen and you can also split your screen this way just to show you some of you might prefer it this way and this is in fact my favorite way to do it the other thing that we can do is we can lock these in place and that's where we're going to go back to this so if you're if you tend to jump around a lot and you're you're worried about that you can lock this so now um, I can't move out of this if I have um, I can toggle back and forth here okay and if you toggle it unlocks it but for now it'll just un it'll lock it into place and you can say go do the same thing with your research you can lock it into place or if you don't want to lock this because you want to be able to to have your research be able to jump around through your different research then then you can quite easily do that okay let's go back to family group sheet there there we go so you can lock these and that's a nice little tool if you're a little trigger happy like me uh, then then that's perfect perfect place to do that the other thing let's take a look at our footer bar down here we have our footer bar and that shows you our word count now there's a little bullseye here and this allows me to put a word count in here so if I want to um, have a word count on each of my scenes I can um, easily do that and this allows me to see my target so there's a nice little bar graph here because it shows me I'm already over my word count so that's a great way to keep an eye on your on your uh, on your word counts and your goals and this will allow you to zoom in on your text it doesn't change the size of your text it just zooms in on it so it's great if you happen to be tired one night and you need those that screen to be a little bit little bit larger okay let's just unlock these and let's go back to full screen okay and I'm going to add back in here now our our binder and let's add back in our editor our inspector pardon me okay and then I want to show you another fantastic full screen mode um, in Mac they call it composition mode but this is a really stripped down version and if you go over to view and you come here to oh, sorry I've got to click on the editor first and you can also get to it by hitting F11 and here we have basically a sheet of paper on the screen where we can write and there is basically no um, distractions whatsoever here 
down here you have a little bar that will jump up and down. And I want to show you this little background fade in and out. If we do this, there is our interface behind it. Okay, and this is basically pulled up your sheet over top of it. So you could leave it like that if you want, but if you're like me and like to get rid of these distractions, this is the perfect place to be if you don't need your research in front of me, if you're just in writing mode and you just want to, you don't want to have any distractions, then, then this is the place to be. Also down here in your footer, again, you can change the size of your text. You're not changing the text itself. You're just zooming in and out on it. Um, you can adjust your page to the left or to the right or to the center. Okay, you can also adjust the size of your paper. That's pretty cool. Um, here you can bring up your keywords. We talked about those in the last video. You can also bring up your inspector and your inspector is completely um, accessible from here. You can totally uh, change it. Uh, it's totally edible at, from, from this spot. And here is your little shortcut again. So this is if you want to jump to something else, you can do that um, from here quite easily. We can pull up um, something entirely different altogether. Okay, so that's it. And then just a little box over here you click on and that takes you back to your interface. So that's about all the time we have for today. But before we finish up, I want to show you one other little thing. And by hitting F1 uh, shortcut, you'll pull up your user manual. So this is a great place to, if you have a question about something, you can easily find it through here. Now, I personally don't find this to be the best format for me. I prefer a reference book on my on my desk. So um, I have uh, been using uh, a couple different books, but my favorite is Scrivener for Dummies. And um, if you tune in next week to the blog, I'm going to be doing a review of this book, and you're also going to get an opportunity to win a copy of it, along with another bonus prize, which I'll tell you about next week. And I'll tell you about how you can win that. So make sure you, you stay tuned for that because, um, and also we've got um, a couple more videos coming. We're going to take a look, like I said, we're going to take a look at snapshots. We're going to take a look at formatting, how to bring in a project that maybe you've already started into Word. We're going to take a look at the outliner and I'm also working on a big video for footnotes and endnotes and references. So a lot more coming. Um, I'm going to try and have a couple small videos up for you next week along to tell you about the book review and the contest. So uh, stay tuned for more more, lots more stuff coming on Scribner for the Family History Writer. This has been Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist.